So there has been a growing number of requests from our viewers and subscribers asking us to do a strategy on VWAP. And I figured after much, you know, after many requests, we figured why not? Let's do it. So in this video, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to show you a strategy and a proper way that you could use the VWAP indicator to your advantage. But more importantly, not only show you the strategy, but also address some of the most common issues that we see a lot of beginners make when using VWAP for the first time. So that sounds good, guys. Let's roll the footage. Let's get to it. What's going on, everybody? My name is Paul Casado. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for tuning in for this brand new update. So like I said a few moments ago, we're going to show you how you can use the VWAP indicator properly. We're going to explain to you a strategy to find your entry points and also, more importantly, go over some of the most common mistakes that we see a lot of people doing when using this indicator as a beginner trader or for the first time. So by spreading awareness, you'll be able to understand what you should be doing and, of course, what you should not be doing as well. Now, as we go through this tutorial, if you have any questions, drop a comment down below or email me directly anytime at prestigebanner at gmail.com, guys, and I'll be more than happy to help. And for those of you who are new to the channel or if you haven't already, Ready, make sure that you do subscribe, turn on notifications. That way, when we do go live with new strategies and updates, everything related to trading in the crypto industry, when we go live with those updates, you won't miss out. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, as I'm sure you will, make sure that you smash the like button as well, guys, as we appreciate and love your support. Now, one final thing I do just want to remind everyone is that for those of you who are watching this video, if you're new to trading, right? If you're new, brand new to trading, you're just getting started in your trading journey, or maybe you're someone who has been trading for a little bit, right? You've been trading for a while, but you're not seeing the results that you wanted. You're either losing money all the time or you've actually blown your fair share of accounts. Don't worry, guys. We actually have a solution for you. I highly recommend checking out the link down below in the video description in relation to our trading community. This is a great place for beginners to learn how to trade, but also for struggling traders to improve their trading skills and actually start seeing success in their trading. And that is due to the amazing benefits and features that we provide, such as education, which are course is essential if you want to be a, a, a successful trader daily access to daily live trading sessions and of course signals that are sent to your phone each and every single day that you can copy from it so much more guys so again i'll leave all that information down below but without further ado let's proceed and let's talk about this strategy Okay, guys, so obviously we need to add that indicator, VWAP indicator to our chart, which is pretty much going to look like this, except for some slight adjustments, which we will go over in the settings, right? So if we go here to the settings, all right, I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Um, the most important part that you need to um, adjust in your VWAP is the multiplier, also known as the deviation segment. I believe the default setting here is set to one. You're going to change that to two. That's going to expand the upper and lower levels of the VWAP indicator, okay? Now, if we go to style, this is where you can actually make adjustments to the lines itself of the uh the blue line here which is our vwap line this is the mid-level of the vwap indicator i changed that to blue upper band changed to red lower band green but honestly guys it really doesn't matter if you just want to leave it at default settings uh that's perfectly okay and if we go to visibility we haven't changed anything everything just stays the way it is and just click okay once you do this is pretty much what your indicator is going to look like now just to clarify a couple of things here guys when it comes to the vwap indicator um this indicator is widely used for intraday trading and swing traders, but it can also be used as a scalping tool if need be. Now, granted, because there are various ways that you could use this, it is highly recommended that you back test this on a demo account. So that way you could see how it works and how it could potentially fit into your trading depending on the style that you prefer. All right. Now, another thing you also want to notice about the VWAP is that as we go through the data of price, right? In this case, we're looking at the GBPUSD. You'll notice that there are these vertical segments of the VWAP. Now, basically what these represent in between each vertical segment. So we have a vertical segment here, a vertical segment here, vertical segment here, and so on, all right? Everything in between the vertical segments are 24 hours of price data. Okay, so just to show you, this at this point is around 17 GMT, August 12th, all right? But if we bring this down to the next vertical segment, we are looking at 17 GMT the next day, August 13th, all right? Now, when we're looking at the view up indicator itself, again, we have our upper level, we have our lower level, and then we have the mid level, which is our blue, that is the VWAP 
indicating line, all right? Do not confuse this, of course, with Bollinger Bands or any other indicators. I know that this does look very similar to a Bollinger Band, but it is not. It is used very, very differently, which we are going to go over right now. But mainly, and generally speaking, when using the VWAP indicator, um, when price goes near the blue line, which is the VWAP line, these are ideal positions to enter for buys and sell trades for the fact that the VWAP line can be used at times as a level of support and resistance. But having said that, that's not the only time that you would want to enter trades because the upper and lower levels of the VWAP line can also represent a level or a zone of support and resistance as well. But just because they can be used as levels of support and resistance does not mean that we should rely on them for placing our buys and sells because when you are in a strong trending market okay you're going to see that price in this case we are in the seller's market price is hugging very closely to the lower level of our VWAP indicator and we can also see that here in this bullish market how because of the strong trend and the strong bullish market that price is currently in you can see that price is not deviating away from the upper level of our VWAP indicator okay so having said that ladies and gentlemen right if we just expand this out a little bit okay we can see we have a 24 hour period here we have a 24 hour period here and we have a 24 hour period here this is a perfect representation of the three different types of markets you are most likely going to encounter when trading in general regardless if you're using the VWAP or not you're either going to be in an uptrend you're either going to be in a ranging sideways market or you're going to be in a downtrend okay so what i'm going to be doing in this video is showing you how you can use this indicator depending on the type of market that you win but before we do that let's talk about a couple of things here prior right? let's talk about some of the most common mistakes that we see a lot of people talk about in relation to the VWAP indicator because as you know guys we live in a digital age and you know in YouTube there's a lot of videos on how to use different strategies and different indicators and some of them you know not to be negative towards anyone but some of them can be a little bit misleading now one of the great tools that you can use in addition to the VWAP indicator as at a confluence is the RSI. Now, these are default settings of the RSI. We don't need to make any adjustments, but basically we have upper levels, right? If we look at the RSI, we have upper levels of 70 and lower levels of 30, right? Default settings, nothing that we need to adjust at that area. And what we've noticed that a lot of people would recommend doing is that if RSI is overbought, we're gonna be looking for sell trades, right? But if price is oversold, we're going to be looking for buy trades. Now, while that may work in some scenarios, it won't always work, especially if you are in a trending market. So just to show you some examples here, guys. All right. We can see that we're in a buyer's market. Let me just minimize this a little bit. We can see that we are in a buyer's market. We can see that during this bull run, okay, price or excuse me, not price, but the RSI is, you know, maintaining at that overbought level, which according to some of the quote unquote rules that other people dictate, if price, uh, if our side reaches overbought, we should be looking for sell trades. Now, if we looked for sell trades in any of these areas, you can see that we would have lost every single one of those trades, okay? And we can also see that here that we had multiple levels where our RSI was completely oversold, where again, people would say, oh, look for a buy trade. But as you can see in this entire area, if we had looked for any buy trades, those would have all been losing trades. So that is a very common mistake that we see a lot of beginners do or commit when using the VWAP indicator. So now what we're gonna do is explain to you how this can be used properly in a bullish market, in a ranging market, and in a bearish market. So now let's actually first start with the bullish market. Okay, guys, now in this bullish market example, this is actually a perfect representation of a bullish market because as you can see, it did not start off as a bullish market. It actually started off as a range of market. So we can see those levels here. We had a level of resistance and we also had some levels of support here and as you can see, eventually this area of range and market was broken at this level. And we saw that here where price broke out of our resistance, came back to retest and started creating a series of higher highs. Now, when you understand structure, okay, you can spot these opportune moments for entering potential trend continuation trades. Also, in this case, a buyer's market, we're looking for buy trades. Now, what do we see here? We see that price finally broke out of this little range. OK, it came back for a retest and started creating another series of higher highs, right? Higher highs and higher lows, basic structure of a bull run. So when we're looking at 
the VWAP, like I said, when we're looking at the VWAP indicator and you're in a strong market, right? A strong trending market is going to hug, you know, in this case, the upper level of our VWAP. And we're not really going to see any levels of oversold in our RSI or price to come close to our VWAP in a lot of cases, right? It can happen, but not always. But what do we see here? We see price creating higher highs and higher lows creating levels of support and resistance. So when price broke through this resistance, right, which was created by this higher high, came back out for a retest, this would have been an ideal position to enter a buy trade for the fact that not only are we creating, you know, bullish market momentum, but it's also hugging the upper level of our VWAP. Okay, now if we had entered for this trade here at the retest, stop loss would be beyond this level of support for about 12 pips. Now you can target a one to one, one to two, or beyond that, or trail your stop loss depending on your risk parameters. But as you can see, we could have taken this for a maximum of 46 pips. So risking 12 pips to make 46 is really not that bad. That is an amazing risk to reward ratio, right? But what else do we see in this area, right? What else can we see? based on the VWAP and based on the RSI, right? Obviously, when it comes to the old standard ways that many people fall into the trap of, you know, looking for overbought and oversold levels of the RSI to enter buys and sell trades doesn't always work. But there are other ways that we could use this, all right? And that is also looking for levels of bullish and bearish divergence, right? So what do I mean by that? Well, again, for the fact that we're looking at a bull run, right? Bullish market, higher highs and higher lows, we can see that in this area of the VWAP, we can see that price is creating higher low and another higher low. But in that same region, if we look at our RSI, RSI was creating a lower low and another lower low. So in other words, price is moving in one direction, RSI is moving an opposite level of structure. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a prime example of bullish divergence. And in bullish divergence, price is going to continue in that upward trajectory for a certain amount of time. So if we had missed this original entry or even this entry of structure, we could still enter for a buy trade at this point here, at this confirmation of divergence. Now, our support will be our stop loss would be at this level here for about 12 pips, 12, 13 pips for a maximum of 32, 33 pips, which again is not a bad risk to reward ratio. So this right here, guys, is my ideal way of using the VWAP and the RSI in a bullish market. Now let's take a few moments and let's look at a bearish market and then we'll show you how to do this in a range of market, which of course is very different. Okay, guys, now as you can see, we are clearly in a bearish market example, right? Price is going down, creating lower highs and lower lows. Now, just as a reminder, guys, for those of you who don't fully understand how to identify your trending levels in the market, whether it's a uptrend, downtrend, or range of market, I highly recommend that you check out our trend analysis video, which we created a few days ago. I will also leave the link down below in the video description. But in this area, right, we're looking at current price of the GBP USD, right? So our 24 hour period has not concluded just yet, but overall we can see that for the, in most of the entire day, we have been seeing downward movements, creating lower highs and lower lows. Now, remember the concept that I told you before about how once price gets close to or makes contact of our VWAP line, which is the blue mid-level, right? Those can be ideal points of the market that you can enter for buys and sell trades because it can at times serve as a level of support and resistance. But we obviously do not want to rely on the indicator alone, all right? And if we also look at the RSI, we can see that we are fully overbought, okay? and we are in a trending market. So even though it's not always ideal to just rely on overbought and oversold levels based on the RSI, it can work in your favor when you do it properly, just like in this example. We have contact of our VWAP line. We have over, so, uh, excuse me, overbought conditions of our RSI. We can also see that we are in a downtrend creating a level of structure, but more importantly, what else do we see in this level? We can see, that this level of resistance of this peak, right, was once a level of resistance here, also a level of support in this range, okay? And if we pull back, okay, also served as support here, okay? So what was, res what was support here 
support here, support here has now turned into resistance here and at this point. So we are providing ourselves with multiple levels of confluence that it is most likely price is going to continue in this downtrend. So if we had done this properly, we would enter for a trade here at the close of this bearish candle. Stop loss beyond this level of resistance here. We're only risking about 10, 11 pips at this point. Now our next target for take profit would be at a level of structure. As we can see here, we have some major support levels that we actually marked up from that bullish market example, right? So this would have been an ideal target for your first take profit. So risking 11 pips out of 36 is again, another strong risk to reward ratio, okay? Now, let's show you another example here, guys, all right? Because let's say when in this market area, you miss this opportunity, okay? We can see that price is no longer making contact with our VWA, but it is getting a little bit close and we can still use that to our advantage in this area, in this area. But not just relying on the fact that price is getting close to our VWA, what else do we see in this market? What else do we see, guys? Well, we can see that price has created a slight bearish divergence here and here, creating a series of lower highs and lower highs. But in that same region, we are looking at our RSI and we can see higher highs and higher highs. Okay. Very similar to our bullish market example where we saw that bullish divergence, but this right here is a bearish divergence and in a bearish divergence, it can have the potential of pushing price down even further. So if we had missed this original trade opportunity for, you know, risking 11 pips to make almost 37, we could enter this trade here for a potential sell. Our stop loss beyond this pullback here or this level of resistance targeting the next level of structure for 22 or even further for a maximum to current price, which is now at 81. All right. Now let's not forget the original trade entry that we saw. We had multiple levels of confluences here for this sell trade for a minimum of 36 pips. Let's say that this trade is still open, right? Let's say that this trade is still open. It's still fluctuating. And we see that during the boom, that during this time that this trade is still active, we see bearish divergence after our trade had already been entered. We can then use that as an at a level of confluence, bring our stop loss to our entry point, right? Or to break even, which means that this trade is now a risk free trade and we target multiple take profit levels. So. 36 pips would have been our first take profit level. This level is structured here for support for 71 would have been our second. All right. And again, taking this for a maximum of in this particular trade, almost 100 pips risking 12 pips to make almost 100. Again, a very strong risk reward. So as you can see, guys, how this could be used in multiple ways. So now let's talk about how this could be used in a ranging market. All right. Also known as a sideways or consolidated market condition. All right, guys, so let's now talk about a range in market, because again, just to recap, what do we know so far? Whenever we enter the markets, we're going to see one of three market types. We're going to see a bullish market, a bearish market or a sideways market. And in this case, we can see that price clearly for this 24 hour period did not do much of any trending trending movements, except more of this sideways ranging area. So what do we see here, guys? What do we know about a sideways ranging market? We can see that price is going to move between a level of resistance that we see here as for our support. All right. This is actually a previous level of support based on our level of newly found resistance that we had found in our sellers market example. So this is one level of support, but we also had a level of support here. OK, so these are two areas of support that we would want to look into. And as you can see, price is just bouncing between these two levels. So because of this type of condition that we're looking at, this is where we could be excused of using the RSI in the manner of looking for buys and sell trades based on overbought and oversold conditions. Now, we see that here as well, where price was oversold on the RSI price is hitting our support. OK, so for a buy trade, this would have been successful support uh, stop loss beyond this level of support. OK, and we could have taken this all the way up to our level of resistance for about 30 pips, risking less than 10 pips to make over 30 pips. Right. And when price came up to this level of resistance, we see that we were overbought. 
All right, so we would enter here at the opening of this candle, stop loss beyond this level of resistance. Again, risking only about eight to nine pips, and we could have taken this trade down for a maximum of 41. So these are some pretty good uh, risk reward ratios here, but you'll notice how it won't always bounce between that level of support or that resistance, which is why it's important and that we are mindful of the structure of the markets because we had another fully oversold condition here from our RSI and we had price breaching and creating some resistance or I should say rejections off of this key level of support. But you'll notice how price only came up to this level of our VWAP indicator. So having said that, ladies and gentlemen, you know, it is ideal as we say this in a lot of videos. Um, yes, it is okay to trade in trending market, or excuse me, in range of markets if you understand how to do it properly, but it's always best to trade in a trending market. But if we look back here, ladies and gentlemen, just to quickly recap, all right, the VWAP indicator is very, very powerful. Like I said, used for can be used for scalping, but mainly used for intraday and swing trading scenarios. But we want to combine it with other technical factors or other technical tools such as the RSI, but never fully relying on just the indicators alone for placing our trades. We need to combine them with our analysis, with our levels of structure and price action in the markets. And that right there, guys, will give us the added confidence that we need for targeting more successful trades. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you found this video helpful. Again, if you have any questions, drop them down below or you can email me anytime and smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. And do not forget that if you're new to trading or if you're struggling in your trading, if you're tired of trying out different strategies and they're not working out for your favor, but you see them working out for other people, remember guys that the key to your success isn't the indicator or the strategy, it is you taking the time to learn how to trade properly. When you do that, then you can use any indicator or strategy to your advantage. So don't forget to check out the information down below of our academy where not only you get to learn how to trade or improve your trading skills, but also make money in the process. And this is all made possible through the benefits that we provide. Education, which of course is what's going to make you a better trader, but also access to daily live trading sessions hosted by the best traders in this industry, signals that are sent to your phone each and every single day, and so much more guys. That's just a fraction of what we provide. But again, all that information is down below. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. We'll see you on the next one.